McDavid might not be the league's best player just yet, but what makes him the most significant is his already developed skill set, bright future and marketability. How high should a rookie rank among the NHL's most important players before skating a single professional shift? Most of the time, seniority-based, pay-your-dues hierarchies govern professional sports. The rookie can be used as a derogatory term because it implies unproven. And the NHL may be the league that devalues the latecomer the most. Veteran initiates rookie is the way of thinking at the micro level. At the macro level, it is also evident. Entry-level players must wait for the longest to achieve free agency and real market value. They must first pay their dues for seven years before they even get a whiff of those things. For those who watch the game from the stands or the press box, history and the status quo have a strong hold on conventional wisdom. You have to earn it first, regardless of who you are, who you think you are, or who people assume you to be. After all, McDavid is only a teen. His ball hockey net is currently leaning against the garage of his family's suburban home in Newmarket, Ontario. This spring, on the eve of the NHL Combine, he attended his high school prom. He also appears destined to be an average 18-year-old, or at the very least, one with an A vocabulary student. He doesn't resemble the greats depicted in these pages. Rather, he resembles a young fan who would wait outside the arena for autograph seekers. We now return to a discussion of small and large-scale photos. Micro. The determination of a player's impact on a team rests with those who cast their subjective votes for the Hart Trophy or who conduct some kind of objective statistical evaluation of each player and goaltender in the league. Macro. It's difficult to decide how much a player has influenced the league and it's impossible to quantify. Is the meaning of the name more important than name recognition? Is it earnings or potential for earnings both on and off the ice? The reality is that every player on this list is crucial to his team. The league is in dire need of McDavid. At 18, his talent level is on par with that of legends like Orr, Gretzky, Lemieux, and the two players who once topped such lists, Sidney Crosby and Alex Ovechkin. While that has been acknowledged, less has been said about the fact that McDavid's timing has been just as accurate as theirs. They all appeared when they were the most needed, and he has done the same. They also had to ignore the doubters, the status quo adherents, who complained that they hadn't done anything yet when they first arrived. First, go back to 1966, Bobby Orr's first season. Fans remember Orr's end-to-end -end rushes throughout his career, including the cup-winning goal he scored against St. Louis in 1970 while flying through the air. But the only memory they have of him in his rookie season is of him as a callow youngster sporting a boot camp bean shave on a hockey card. There was healthy skepticism about Orr's blue line having the game-changing offensive impact from the blue line in the NHL that he did in junior. According to those of us unfortunate enough to remember that season, the final one with the original six. The belief was that he would discover that it was a man's league. The NHL was more of an old man's league than a man's league, according to the skeptics. The worst kind of new talent was needed by the league. Now it's mind-boggling to see. The 18-year-old Orr easily won the Calder Trophy in his rookie season, as was expected. But what is remarkable are the runners-up, Chicago defenseman Ed Van Imp and Toronto forward Brian Conacher, both of whom are now in their mid-twenties. The voting for the Norris Trophy was even more dramatic. Harry Howell, 34, and Pierre Pilote, 35, both of them from New York, finished first and second respectively. Tim Horton, a 37-year-old player, finished in fourth place. The Hart Trophy belts also show that this wasn't just a slump for the defenseman or rookie class, or received sixth place in the Hart voting. The other players in the top 11 had ages ranging from 30 to almost 40, with Gordy Howe and Red Kelly being two of them. The picture appeared incredibly gray for several reasons, not the least of which was that the game broadcasts were in black and white. Now consider the aging demographic in the context of the league. In Orr's sophomore season, the NHL was set to double in size, with the majority of roster spots going to journeymen who never would have had a chance to play if it weren't for the expansion. Even though the Canadiens and the Leafs continued their streak of Stanley Cup victories dating back to 1961, the challenge would have been even more difficult. A young superstar in a significant U.S. market was needed by the NHL. 
while New York and Los Angeles would have been nice, Boston, with its passion for sports, would do. However, it took three whole years for Orr to become the first NHL player to be named Sportsman of the Year by Sports Illustrated. The most useful and frequently reliable indicator of success and widespread notoriety in the perspiring arts. One could agree that he had to earn those honors by working hard, learning the league, and developing a body of work. Turning that logic on its head, however, who else would have been on the list of NHL players you could have imagined being in contention for SI's honors during Orr's rookie season? Not Stan Makita, the Hart Award winner, not Howell, who expressed his happiness at having won the last Norris before Orr claimed it as his own while accepting the award. Before Orr's honor, Bobby Hull and Jean Boliveau had both appeared on SI covers, but Orr's achievement broke the league out of its small, exclusive niche. Consider Wayne Gretzky, the second NHL player to be honored as SI's Sportsman of the Year. Once more, a potential crossover celebrity appeared at a critical moment. In 1979 and 80, the season following Orr's agonizing and agonizing to watch departure from the league, Gretzky played in six agonizing games with the Blackhawks. The NHL lost its biggest name and arguably its best player ever at a time when he would have been, without injury, in the late stages of his career. Although Orr wasn't much of a presence in the game near the end, he missed the entire 78-78 season, the sense of void was undeniable. The mid to late 1970s represent an aesthetic low point for the NHL because of expansion and the World Hockey Association, which diluted the league's talent level even though the Canadiens of that era rank as one of the best teams of all time. Who would have suggested if someone had asked you back then which NHL player was most likely to inherit or status as a mainstream star in 1979? Someone whose name would be known to sports fans not just in Canada, but also in the US and elsewhere in the world. The Islanders' center, Brian Trottier, won the Hart and Art Ross trophies, but he lacked any sort of star power. Bob Ganey received the Conn Smythe, which he undoubtedly deserved, even though most casual hockey fans would be unaware of his abilities and significance to the Canadiens. Bobby Smith of Minnesota won the Calder that year, but he was the same Bobby Smith who chased Wayne Gretzky around in vain during the Ontario Hockey Association playoffs two seasons prior. The NHL needed a leader who could command attention through talent because Orr had left, and four WHA teams were joining the league after it merged. And Gretzky, then 19 years old, did that during his rookie NHL season. He shared the league's top scoring position with Marcel Dion, but lost out to Dion for the Art Ross by goal scored. Nevertheless, Gretzky took home his first of many Hart trophies. Other teams were better but you could tell that something special was happening in Edmonton. He turned the Oilers into the league's most intriguing team. A few more seasons later, Gretzky was breaking records seemingly every game while the Oilers were winning Stanley Cups. His image was frequently seen on cereal boxes as a product endorser. How many customers or their children would have recognized Trottier, Ganey, or Smith if they had been on a cereal box in 1979? Gretzky would have been just as well known as them even in his first season in the league, if not more so. At the age of 18, Connor McDavid enters the NHL with skills comparable to those of Bobby Orr and Wayne Gretzky. McDavid has repeatedly shown his brilliance in highlight reel plays during the World Junior Championship or the Major Junior Playoffs against the best players in his age group and older. He not only skates faster than the other players, but also processes plays and moves the puck through traffic at such a rapid pace that viewers need to watch him in slow motion to fully appreciate him. Not only does McDavid have the skill, but he also has an intriguing plot that references his ancestors. He ends up joining a team that has been a doormat for years, much like Orr did before him. Like Gretzky, he finds himself an adopted son of Southern Ontario in Northern Alberta. He's more comfortable speaking to the media at age 18 than any of the celebrities mentioned before, or, in fact, than 99.9% .9 of 18-year-olds with any level of talent. The question is, will Connor get the recognition he deserves? Let's wrap this bad boy up. Do like and share our video. Do share your thoughts on this in the comments section, and don't forget to throw ice at our bell icon.